It is all very well knowing what law reports are and what each part of a law report looks like, but that is only the beginning of the story. The purpose of law reporting and why law reports have been written for hundreds of years is to provide lawyers with a record of decided cases, a record which lawyers can use when arguing cases in court. The purpose of um, legal argument is to persuade uh, to persuade a decision maker to give you a particular result, the result which you want to get for your client. And in order to do that, you have to have the support of um, legal principle and legal precedent. And in order to satisfy the court that the precedent and the principle favour your argument, you've got to explain that by reference to the case. So how does one use them? How does a lawyer cite session cases, or any cases for that matter, in court? recently had a counsel who started to read this particular paragraph, in the middle of which was a sentence in Latin, and on reaching it she said, I'll leave the Latin to your lordship. And I said, Miss, so -so, what does the Latin mean? And she said, I've no idea. Latin is often used to encapsulate a legal principle. It's not just thrown in for the sake of it. If they haven't understood what the Latin is that they're using, then they might not have understood what the legal principle is that they're seeking to take from the case. As an advocate, it's absolutely essential that you understand what the, a case that you're citing is all about and why you're citing it to the judge. You give the name of the case in full clearly to the court and then you give the citation. And by that, I do not mean you just rule off 2010 SC 112. It's very tempting, of course, for people to lapse into uh, initials and say SC and SLT. I, I think nowadays uh, judges don't mind too much about that. When I was young, that would be frowned upon. You go through it uh, with care and explain this decision is reported in session cases for the year 2010 at whatever page number. My Lord, my learned friend referred to the case of Sutherland against Campbell, which is to be found at 2004 Session Cases, page 179. That's the easy bit. The more difficult bit is knowing whether you should cite the case. The search engines make law reports so accessible that you tend to have more rather than less information to put before the court. So you end up to establish a certain legal proposition. You'll cite an inner house authority, then you'll explain that. This was applied in the outer house, and this was discussed in the sheriff court decision. The skill is in trying to distill that into what is really important for your case. Unless your lordship has any further questions. Sometimes authorities are cited when they don't need to be cited at all, and sometimes a raft of authorities may be cited when one or two cases would actually suffice. It's not helpful to the judge or to the litigant to have uh, someone simply come in with spadefuls of irrelevant material. The skill, of course, as it's always been, is in using the authorities that most thoughtfully deal with the issue. What is also important, I think, is that when counsel come to cite a case, that they should know why they are citing it. You make sure you know the case inside out, but you identify from the case a particular part of the case that you're relying on, and then you explain why you rely on it. There's nothing more frustrating uh, to the court to be taken to a case and bits to be read out and say, yes, Mr. So -so, but why are you citing this case to us? And then to get no uh, coherent answer to that question. That's the sort of thing that's calculated to annoy judges and one of the jobs of counsel is to annoy the judge as little as possible because um, persuasion generally involves not annoying people. questions for me, those are my submissions.